Many people think of South Yorkshire as an industrial area, home to steel making and coal mining, but that's only part of the story. It's an area of beautiful countryside running from the National Park for the Peak District right out to the unique deep peat marshes at the head of the Humber estuary. It's the smallest part of the Yorkshire region at 600 square miles, that's 1550 square kilometres. Indeed it was only created from part of the West Riding in 1974. The Peak District forms part of the Pennines, the backbone of hills that run down northern England, along which can be found Penniston, just to the north of Sheffield. It is the highest market town in the country, and a spectacular new market hall was opened in 2010. Penniston has not only been a market centre for local farmers, but also for cloth producers. This building was a former cloth hall, and dates from 1768. The church behind is 600 years older than that, dating from the 13th century. Penniston lies in the Barnsley district. Here you'll find a surprising number of stately homes built on the back of industry, such as Cannon Hall, dating from the late 17th century, for the Spencer Stanhope family, who owned ironworks. It's now a museum set in the 70 acres of parkland that is open to the public. Barnsley itself is a busy town. At its centre stands the imposing town hall built in the early 1930s. It's surrounded now by a more modern shopping centre. To the south of Barnsley lies the former coal mining district along the Dern Valley. This has been regenerated since the mines closed in the 1980s and 90s. This is the RSPB's Old Moor Wetland Reserve created in 2003 on the site of a former mine. On a hillside stands Wentworth Woodhouse, a stately home with the longest facade at 185 metres, that's 606 feet, in Europe. The house is private and can't be visited, but public footpaths crisscross the Parkland estate, dotted with follies such as the Needle's Eye, built in 1790 by the Marquis of Rockingham, it was as a bet that he could drive a coach and horses through the eye of a needle. Another is the 115-foot high Keppel's Column, built in 1788. And the pyramid called Huber Stand, to commemorate the defeat of the Jacobite Rebellion in 1746. Another unusual feature can be found in the city of Rotherham, six miles to the south. It's a chantry chapel on a bridge. It's one of four which still exist in the country. One of the others is at Wakefield in West Yorkshire. Here you left arms and prayed for a safe journey. Much has changed in Rotherham throughout the centuries as the town, just eight miles from Sheffield, has been home to both the pottery industry, the highly collectible Rockingham pottery, and also steel making. These days you can visit a former steel mill has now been converted into the Magna Science Museum. It comes as something of a surprise to find this castle, just off the main road between Rotherham and Doncaster. It's Conisborough Castle, sitting on a mound above the River Don. It was built in about 1180, with a 90-foot high circular keep with six mighty buttresses to strengthen it. It might look fearsome, but it was never at the centre of any major conflicts, and even by the early 16th century it had fallen into ruins. Its main fame lies in the fact that it was the setting for Sir Walter Scott's historical novel Ivanhoe, written in 1819. In the village can be found a church, said to have been founded around 540 AD. Doncaster is an ancient town, although almost all of its past, going back to Roman times, has now been erased. Doncaster too was a centre for coal mining and the rail engineering industry. The large church, St George's, in the centre is Victorian, as the medieval church burned down in 1853. 
A mansion house, one of only four left in the country, was built for Doncaster's Lord Mayor in 1751 as a place to entertain dignitaries. Above the entrance is the motto of Doncaster, appropriately enough for this building, Confort et Lies, translated as comfort and joy. Perhaps the focal point for the town is the market. It was granted its first charter in 1194, although it almost stands on top of the Roman market that was first held in AD 43. It is divided into areas, the indoor market, the wool market, Goose Hill Market and the Fish Market, all centred around the former Corn Exchange. The markets take place here on Tuesdays, Fridays and Saturdays, with a second-hand market on a Wednesday. The Dongster district runs right out to the Humber Estuary, where, near the small town of Thorn, there is a vast wetland of 12 square miles called the Humberhead Levels. Here, decaying vegetable and mineral matter, built up over centuries, has created deep peat deposits. The area attracts migratory birds and other wildlife to this most unusual area of Yorkshire.